रामाय राम भद्राय राम चंद्राय वेद से रघुनाथाय नथाय सीताय पति सुंदर कांड चैप्टर नंबर थर्टी हनुमान डिसाइड्स टू एड्रेस सीता द रेसिटेशन बिगिन्स नाउ द वैलेंट आंजनेय वाज अ पेशेंट लिसनर टू द टॉक ऑफ सीता विद द राक्षसीस एंड द ड्रीम दैट त्रिजिता अनफोल्डेड लेटर ऑन He directed a careful look at the lady as she sat there like a heavenly nymph in the garden of Indra. Many a thought flashed across his brain and he said to himself, "It was given to me and to no other to bless myself with the sight of Lady Sita, whom myriads of monkeys are seeking for all over the earth." Like unto a secret spy, I have most skillfully acquainted myself with the city, the greatness and power of Ravana, and the peculiar characteristics of the Rakshasas, all unseen by them. The beloved lady of Rama is consumed with the desire to meet him, the hero of boundless might and the lord of compassion to all the creation. It is absolutely necessary that I should bring comfort to her heart. an entire stranger to sorrow now she is in its cruel grasp and sees no end to it no relief and this lady of beauty as a full moon should i console at all costs if i go back without assuaging the heart of this lady buffeted by the waves of the grief i will be guilty of the most heinous of crimes This princess of worldwide renown is entirely unaware of the fact that there are friends and protectors near her and she will quit her hold upon life before I go back to my friends I am Lord Rama warrior of warriors whose face delights the heart of everyone like the full orbed moon yearns to see the lady Sita It is most urgent that I take back to him the news of his wife and console him as best as I can. But these rakshasis are wide awake, and it is impossible for me to have speech with my lady. Now, how shall I work it out? My objects do not pull on together. Yet there remains somewhat of this night, and before it wears away, I must have consoled her. yet there is not the least doubt that she will do away with herself anyhow should i go back without having speech with her i would be forced to stand mute before my lord rama if he were to ask me what news do you carry to me from my beloved sita were i to go back in all haste without carrying with me any message from this lady the wrath of rama will blaze forth and consume me to ashes I must speak to her. I must convey to her the message that her lord entrusted to me. I must bring relief as best as I may. Else what good would it be if I return and bring with me his majesty Sugriva to do battle with Ravana? For Sita would be but a thing of the past long before he and his armies reach these shores. So I will from my hiding place here watch for an opportunity when the rakshasis are asleep or away to talk to my lady and gradually dispel the grief and gloom that weigh her heart now how shall i speak i am a monkey shall i take a very small form and speak in the language of men or shall i use the language of gods the perfectly formed sanskrit But if I speak Sanskrit like a Brahmana, Sita will be filled with fear and say, "How could a monkey have a chance of speaking to others in Sanskrit?" And so Ravana and no other has come to see me in disguise and put some fresh deceit upon me. Hmm. It is good that I use the speech of men, pregnant with high import. I see no other way of consoling her. I will adapt the talk of the people of Koshala. Let it be. What form shall I take? If I stand before her as I am, like a monkey, she will note my form and the human speech entirely unconsonant to it. She has till now been threatened and deceived by the rakshasas many a way. She will be frightened and she will scream out under the belief that I am no other than Ravana, who can take any form at will. Her screams will wake the rakshasas, and they will fall upon me with many a weapon and try their best to capture or kill me. 
When they behold me grasping at the branches and trunks of trees and leaping to and fro, their hearts will quit with terror at the sight of the huge shape I would take to fight with them and cry half in doubt. A puny monkey, a ranger of the forests, how could he be endowed with this vast bulk? He must be some emissary of one of our foes, capable of taking any form at will. Then they will bring the palace guards of Ravana, who will fight with me most valiantly with swords, tridents, and other cruel weapons. Hemmed by them, I would have my work cut out, very fine, to deal death unto them. I may be too tired thereafter to leap back across the broad sea. It may be that these Rakshasas may fall upon me in countless numbers and take me alive. Then my lady has no chance of getting any news of Rama. These Rakshasas ever delight in the agonies of others will ask her, Who is he? Speak true. And they will try to torture the truth out of her. Then the plans of Rama and Sugriva will be shattered to the winds. Now, Lanka that holds her in strict confinement in secret, and no one knows the way to it. Countless practices watch it more carefully night and day. Should they take me alive or slay me, I see no other monkey who would, after a careful inquiry, take a leap over this wide waste of water, 100 yojanas in extent, and be of any use in accomplishing the purpose of Rama. But no shadow of a doubt crosses my heart whether I will slay in battle these Rakshasas, though they come in countless numbers. I am not sure about leaping back over the sea thereafter. Defeat and victory in fight is not guaranteed to anyone. So I will not entangle myself in a doubtful undertaking. No one with an iota of sense and intelligence will do so. Now this is the position. If I have no speech with Sita, she dies. But if I speak to her in this shape, there follows the dangers that I mentioned above. Affairs of moment at point of fruition fail in the end if entrusted to a messenger with no powers of discretion or discrimination, like unto the cloud of darkness dispelled by the rising sun, for they are not suited to time and place. Affairs of state, even after they have been thoroughly discussed by the king with his councils, come to a sad end when placed in the hands of messengers without discrimination. For they spoil them beyond hope, taking themselves as supremely wise and intelligent. Now the purpose of Rama must be fulfilled. And I must not write myself large as a brainless fool. And Sita must find comfort in my words and not be scared out of her wits. How to bring about that result without any clash? I must speak to her about Rama from my hiding place and he the ideal man and dearest to her heart. Then her thoughts will be centered upon him and keep away fear from her. I should describe in sweet words and pleasant the countless perfections of Sri Rama, the crest jewel of the line of Ikshvakus and the wisest of all men. The Lady Sita would repose confidence in me only after she had listened to that speech, so auspicious and so consonant to virtue. Thus did Marathi of matchless skill deliberate many a way about the spouse of Rama, the Lord of creation. And from his hiding place on high did he begin to discourse sweetly the following words of high import. Mangalam Koshlendraya Mahaniya Gunavtiya Chakravarti Dhanurjaya Sarva Bhaumaya Mangalam.